seems to me that uh, we we all have. For those of you who were interrupted, for some reason we had a had a, a technical problem that I have no idea what happened. <laughs> it's just one of those vagaries of technology. Uh, but it's interesting because while there is while we are all progressing, right, and we're all moving upward. But there comes a time in all our lives when there comes a season for change. And maybe that's why this, the, the, the call dropped or the connection was lost. It's because for what I'm going to talk about, probably it's going to help someone, probably it's going to encourage you, motivate you, or push you to your destiny. Here's the thing. All of us encounter adversity at one point or another. And I can tell you from life experience that the more adversity you encounter, the greater the difficulty is the greater the victory that is ahead of you. If you find yourself in a situation right now where you are literally begging for a change, if you are saying, God, if you're there, please hear me and bring about my change right now. You know you're in line for a major blessing. A major blessing is coming to you. And I just want to encourage you to stay the course and to hang in there. I know it hasn't been easy. It, it does. It's never easy to go through the stuff that we have to go through. I don't care how they make it look. I don't care how... You have white privilege, black privilege, yellow privilege, red privilege, all kinds of privilege. All I know is that there comes a time for all of us when enough is enough, when you have toiled and battled and prepared and positioned yourself and did everything that you possibly could to make it. And instead, just the more you try to hold it together and pull it together, is the more stuff just falls apart, is the more stuff just keeps erupting. I'm here to encourage you that your season of change has started. This is your season of change. This is the season when everything that you have believed for is about to happen. And now, uh, and now we want, and now is the time. Now is the time. Now say now. Now is the time when you are about to experience overcoming. You are going to overcome this. You are going to get past this. This is the season of overcoming. This is the season when everything that try to stop you. Everything that has stopped you is going to stop right now. This is fall and this is the season of change. This is not just a transition. This is change. This is compelling evocative change. This is change that is going to propel you and push you and you're going to find yourself right on the place where you are supposed to be. So I just want to stop. I stopped by this morning. Maybe that's why this didn't. No matter what you're going through, whatever you just think forward. Think on these things. Think on the things that you have worked hard for. Keep reminding yourself that you didn't quit in spite of adversity. Yes, there were times when you felt like giving up. There were times when you literally said enough is enough. But you still you stayed in the game. That's what matters. And you kept trying to find an answer, trying to figure out how to deal with it trying to figure it out. I watched a, a documentary on Bill Gates a couple of evenings ago, for which I'm going to talk about some other time. But there was something that they said about him that I found to be true, is that he persevered. No matter what he's going on, no matter how many times they told him it couldn't be done, it can't be done, he persevered if he had a conviction that this is what he was supposed to do. For some of, some of us, what you're fighting against is other people's will. Other people are looking at what you are doing and telling you it won't work, it can't work, and they're fighting your own conviction. But you are convicted by this one thing that what is said in your heart, what you believe in your mind to be true, your mind and your heart have come together and have formed this unified bond that what I believe is true and I'm going to pursue it. And now everybody else is telling you no, but you are convicted that it can work. You are convicted that you can make it work. So I encourage you not to quit and don't give up. This is the season of change. And let me help you out a little bit. The leaves are going to start falling in just a minute. When the leaves start falling, that's how you know you are closer and closer. By the end of November, we're all scraping leaves together. By Thanksgiving, there are usually no leaves left. And by that time, that's your harvest your harvest is going to coincide with thanksgiving your harvest is going to coincide with the natural harvest and you're going to see the great manifestation of everything that you have been practicing and believing for for some of you you've been singing your heart out forever 
You've been believing that someone would spot you. You've even tried putting out your own own tune. You started SoundCloud and you're believing, do not quit. Last night I was on the web, I, w- I was on Instagram and I was talking to one of my followers. We follow each other mutually and we support one another and do that cross networking. And he is a young man who has a dream and a belief. And you know, he's believing and he has a show called the Van Keto Show, right? The Van Keto Show on, on the online. And he is, he has his own show. He has put it up on other networks, on other podcasts. And I tuned into his show to give him some playback. But I encouraged him because I felt like here he is. He's trying really hard, keeping it clean, working hard at it, doing his craft. And I know what it is like to be out in the trenches. I know what it is like to have fallen down. I know what it is like to have beaten down. I know what it is like when everything in life comes at you while you are building. For me, it was my mother's death. The loss of my mother is unquantifiable. I cannot tell you what it means. The loss of having her companionship, of having her counsel, of having her support. I can't begin to tell you what it means. She was more than just a mother. She was my support system. She was my safety net. She was that you were sure she was going to be there. And no matter how, whatever else could fall, she was going to be there. So you could tell everything in life to go to hell because she was going to be there. Well, my mother died. And in the midst of building my empire, I had nothing left. That's when I re if I thought I knew God before, trust me, my friends, that's when God revealed himself to me in a whole other way, in a way that I couldn't begin to understand. I then began to really know God as father for real, because now I really needed a safe place and somewhere to run to, right? And in the midst of your striving, you get attacked. You come under this incredible assault on your defenses. I mean, you have your defenses up. You you have your belief systems up. You're practicing faith. You are doing all that you can to stay positive. And then you come under assault. I mean, for some of us, it's internal. The worst assault you can get is the internal ones. Anybody know what that is like? Your own family tear up against you. And you're like, okay, so it's one thing to encounter the hatred, the jealousy, and the inf- the fighting from other people who are trying to push you down. They don't want you to get ahead of them. So they don't cross network with you or they know of an opportunity that you could benefit from, but they're not going to tell you about it because they don't want you to get ahead of them. Anybody familiar with that? Well, I have news for you. Your season of change has come. This is your season of change, not transition change, right? And so you're fighting that. But then what about the internal fight? The one right in your household, your children rise up against you. All of a sudden you can't talk to anybody. Nobody wants to listen to you. And it's just constant. No, 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 no. What about the fighting from your husband, the supportive husband, the one who, when you were down, you know, you thought he was there for you. And now that you are rising and you're striving and you're believing and you're making strides, others are seeing the strides you're making and you're making connections and it is lasting impact. And all of a sudden that same husband, now all of a sudden he, he's, he's like, where do you think you're going? What do you do with that? So you, it could be husband, it could be boyfriend, it could be partner, whatever. Whatever the title of the person closest to you is, all of a sudden it could be your best friend whom you have walked with from childhood. The very best friend and you come to this point where you disagree. And now all of a sudden, it's just when you see all these things, that's how you know you're going to win because the victory is for you. It's not for everyone else. You might have had the thought at the back of your mind that you need to bring everyone with you, but no, maybe they can't come with you. Maybe they're not able to share the space with you that you are supposed to be in. That is a space designed just for you where only you alone can stand in that light and shine. Yeah, they are the support system. Well, you, they're what you call the supporting cast, but they're not the main cast of characters. The main cast of character is you, you and only you. And this is your season of change. So I just come by to tell you that this is your season of change. And make no doubt about it. Your change has come. Whether you like it or not, your change has come. It might not even look like what you thought change would be, but it's going to feel funny because you've been believing it for so long. You've waited on it for so long. You have trusted for it for so long that you will probably even see it and look past it. 
not even realizing that that's your change because you've been in this place for so long, waited for so long. You're like, man, you gave everything. Is there anybody out there who can attest to that? You've given everything. You've waited and waited. And suddenly, here it comes. This is your season of change. So as you go through this month, this is the end of September. As you start going through October, start preparing your mind and your spirit for change. You have to start changing the way you think. Go back to that first enthusiasm that you had. If you notice something about that enthusiasm, it spurred you on. It encouraged you and motivated you, but it also what? Delivered your creativity. It helped you to remain creative. It helped you to stay within the creative focus. And what happened was, as long as you stayed creative, you were winning because you were able to overcome the barriers and overcome the obstacles. You could see them and you were enthusiastic and so you could see them. So you found answers to your common dilemmas. You found answers to the issues. Go back to that, refine that. It's kind of, it's gonna need a regeneration. It's going to need a renovation kind of thing. It's going to need some re-engineering to get back to that first level, first base enthusiasm, but you need it. You need it to spur you on because you, this last push, you've been pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed, but you need your enthusiasm. So when you see the change, when the change comes, you won't look past it. You won't look the change dead in the eye and just act like it's nothing. You'll be able to say, oh, wow, thank you so much. I'm so grateful for the opportunity. I look forward to doing this with you. That is a better delivery than, yeah, okay, sure, I can do that. No problem. And the person walked away like, did I just give them the opportunity of a lifetime and they just walked away like nothing? Do you see what I mean? Because sometimes what happens to us is we've been beaten down for so long. And and let me just encourage you there. You're, You're listening to someone who has been there. I was thinking about that this morning. For years, I prepared myself for moments, right? I prepared myself so that there are some things I always felt like were basic and common that I never had to worry about. One of them was getting dressed. One of them is what to wear to a, to, a, to a specific event or so on. And just when you thought you had it together, they stole all of my clothes the day before elections in November 2016. That was a fundamental thing that impacted me in many ways that I probably couldn't see all of it at the time. Well, this morning was one of them. I'm driving down the street and my daughter says to me, are you going to wear that red dress for tomorrow? And I said, yeah, but the more I think about it, I don't have the proper undergarments to wear for it. The Spanx that I want to wear for it, bully to me, nobody thought I needed it, so it's gone. The problem is, the way they sold them years ago, I can't find them in the stores anymore. And every time I go to the store, I probably think of replacing it, but I never remember, because in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, I already have like about a dozen of them, right? Okay, so it never occurred to me that I could buy them online because it just never occurred to me, right? It just never, I wanted to see to make sure it's the right one that suits me, right? So it never occurred to me that like everything else that I buy online, I could buy that, so I never bought. So I'm thinking, well, the dress I wanna wear, I don't have the proper undergarment for it, so I probably can't wear that dress, which means I'm gonna have to wear something else. And I was, I can't begin to tell you how the first thing that happened to me, my mind went back to the fact that I did have it, but somebody robbed me of it by taking my stuff away. Do you see what I'm happening? And that just opened up a whole can of worms because I started thinking how futile and relentless people were in trying to, you know, trying to get my attention. And as the second thought that came to my mind is that's a distraction. Stop it. Stop thinking like that. You can't find a way around it. There are other options. Exercise them. You see what I'm saying? So as you go through this season, don't doubt that there is not going to be something that's going to bring to mind some experience that perhaps is difficult to navigate. Let's be clear. Some of the stuff that have happened to you on the journey to this point were not easy and they were not nice. And they challenged you in ways that you can't begin to understand. They challenged you in ways that perhaps created a discord. They challenged you in ways that it's gonna take some time for you to deal with. Don't worry about it. Don't focus on it right now, because right now you're building. Right now you're getting to the place where once you hit that change, 
it's going to change everything. The change you're approaching is going to change everything. And when I say everything, it's going to make everything else that happened before not matter. It's going to change everything. And that is what I want you to focus on. That is the important thing. What's going to happen with the change? All the groundwork that you have laid, all the things that you have done. Recently, somebody asked me if I wanted to participate in something. And I think they were might have been a little taken aback at the fact that I was a lot more prepared than they thought. What they don't know is, to them, it might seem like I am just starting. But what they don't know is I've been starting for a long time. I had put in all the groundwork and all the basics. So while they were on the other side, hurrying and uh, uh, trying to get it, I was just moving effortlessly and seamlessly because I had been what? Prepared. I had been preparing for years and years and years. It might have seemed to them that I lacked, you know, uh, the, the verve or the enthusiasm. I am just going through it because I have been prepared. I didn't have to race to the finish line. I didn't have to rush to get anything done because I was prepared. So now you understand the journey. Now you understand the process. The process was to prepare you. So when you get to the finish line, you're not, oh my God, did I bring with everything with me? No, 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 you are everything because you have done the work. You have done all the basic work. Does that help you? Do you see what I'm saying? Does that help you to understand? Because sometimes what happens is you're still rushing. Some people get to the finish line and they're not ready yet. They're still searching and flailing and feeling and consequently when they arrive where they're supposed to get, they get there and they're still searching. So they lose their grip. You're not gonna lose your grip because you have been there. In your mind, you've been to the finish line so many times, it's on, you, you can't come. But you have done the work and you have cleaned up. Perhaps even in my story, the people who took my clothes, it's a good thing they did. Because that tells me that they don't belong in the future. That tells me that when the change comes, they could never be part of that change. They could never be part of it because they would have done what? The same thing. And it would have been even more of a loss. So it's a good thing they did it before the change comes because now that tells me and sets me free from ever feeling guilty about not having them be a part of it. Do you see what I'm talking about? Do you understand the process? So now don't doubt the change. This is why when you're going through, you can't doubt the process. No, you can't change the, you can't doubt that. You cannot doubt the process for no, no stretch of the imagination. Can you doubt the process? You cannot doubt how you feel. You cannot doubt the stuff that you go through. Even the minuscule stuff, it all helps to prepare you. It all helps to get you to the point where you are supposed to be. Do not discount that. Don't discount that, oh my God, you know, maybe, you know, oh, maybe it wasn't right. Maybe it wasn't. Don't worry about any of that. Everything that you've been through was a teacher. It was teaching you something. It either taught you about circumstances or it taught you about people because there are only two variables, circumstances and people, circumstances and people. So the process that you went through, it taught you about circumstances and it taught you about people. It made you understand the direct connect that people have on circumstances. So you have to look at the circumstances and the people who made up your process as something that you had to survive, but it was more important than that. It taught you something. Because make no mistake about it, you're going to encounter people like that in your change. And when you encounter them, you're going to know what it takes to treat every one of them, I promise you. Been there. You're going to encounter circumstances like that, but because you've seen a similar circumstance before, now you know what weapon it is that will take that to do that. Do you see what I'm saying? So what I'm saying is be very, very mindful of the fact that people and things 
people and 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 things are 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 there right and so what we need to understand is that people sometimes are 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 part of the process they have to be because the two variables that constitute your 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 journey and your destination are people and circumstances so people are part of the process they have to be because it's people who are going to funnel the change and there will be people on the other side of the change and so it's important to learn the lessons on how to deal with large different groups of people from different situations and people who sometimes don't have our best interest at heart you know those right you know the frenemies we all have i didn't hear any concert going off right people who pretend to be your friends but they're really not your friends frenemies frenemies that's what they're called right then of course there are the people who are our uh who are on our side but they straddle the fence and then there are people who just flatter on support you i remember when i was going through a situation some years ago that some people took sides and one person had the boldness to say well i'm not taking any sides but well by not taking a side you already took a side <laughs> right by not taking any sides you already have taken a side and so what happened is it was crazy in a way because it taught me something about them it 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 made me see that they could never be part of the change that i knew would come it taught me that as much as i wish them well and as much as i wish for them that they would be a part of it they could not fit in because they have they straddle the fence you 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 don't see the issue as being on my side you know one of the things that emerges out of the process is loyalty you get a chance to see who is loyal to you who is going to listen to you and who is not and it gives you a unique perspective on what you are going to do right so you learn a lot of things during this process you learn a lot about people you begin to realize what is important and what is not after a while you begin to see that loyalty is very important in the people around you who wants to be surrounded by people who see you as just pocket change who wants to be surrounded by people who see you as just an event it's something for them to be a part of because you're going to take them to the next level who wants that no one does you see what i'm saying so it's very important for you to learn who are the people in your process and and ladies and gentlemen friends hear me out there are some people who do not belong in your season period get to know them figure out who your frenemies are get to know them and eliminate them yeah just simply not talk or text the people and block them and if they keep coming around don't engage them because they are bad for your process i i, I had one person years ago i really liked her i wanted her to be a friend and i needed a friend or i thought i did and sometimes you have to be careful with what you think you need because sometimes what you need is not good for you but luckily for me she was honest about it and she told me frankly that she could not she had issues dealing with me because <laughs> where i am is where she wants to be and i said well why can't you i can help you get there why can't you what have you done where are you in terms of prepping yourself for it she couldn't answer that question i said well there is the is the problem if you're not preparing yourself for it how do you want to get there but you're not willing to do the work So I asked this question. When people start telling me how they want to do stuff and then I'm like, "What do you do when you go home? Do you just go home and veg out on the couch?" Because and I listen to your answer. Because if what you do is go home and veg on the couch, you're not going to get there. Because to get to this point, you have to what? Work at it. So while she was busy envying me. This was about 3 years ago. While she was busy envying me. I was like I said I had the same issues you had the same challenges I was a single parent raising two children I had a full-time job 
And I had to sit down every evening and work for myself, building my website, learning my skills, figuring out how I'm going to market myself so I could get to where I want to be. And then you're going to sit back and envy me. Those are frenemies. She revealed herself really quickly. So that was a good thing, right? And I kid you not, those people are part of your process. So now that you know, when you get to your change and you're surrounded by people, you can look people in the face and you can determine who is and who isn't. And you learn right away to figure it out and you can get rid of them because they're dangerous. Frenemies are dangerous people. They will set you up. They will call the IRS on you and report stuff. They will call the feds on you, right? And they will go sell your information to the press. So be very, very careful, right? We don't need as much as we think we do. Some people whom you think you need, they're not good for us. I kid you not. Some people are filled with jealousy, even in the partners that we choose. They're filled with jealousy because the spotlight is not on them. The spotlight is on you. Some people, some of us choose partners and you don't even realize that's what they think until you're thrown into the situation and you realize they want the spotlight on them. They want to be the star of the show. Maybe in another time, they were accustomed to being the star in a relationship. They were the pretty girl or they were the pretty boy, whatever your partnership situation is, right? Or whatever your gender situation is, right? Your gender identifying role, right? And so they're accustomed to being the one whom the attention is centered on. So they love the fact that the attention is on them. They're the star. People are talking about them. And that's their profile and that's what they cling to. It sounds immature, but it's real. You could also be doing something. Your ambition sometimes drives people away. Did you know that? So you learn all these things through the process. The fact that you have ambition and drive is scary, even to some members of your family. The fact that your ambition makes them uncomfortable. Yes, they recognize that you are going to leave them, but they're not comfortable knowing that you have more ambition than they do. And sometimes you find that in a partner, when you discover it, you're shocked because you realize they envy you for your ambition. The fact that you dare to be ambitious and you want to do great things. So now they they envy you, but not in a supportive kind of way. Like, I see you. Yeah, let me help you. No. They envy you and they want to tear you down. So they're going to make life as difficult as it is. So you will not get ahead because they really feel bad about themselves. Because sometimes people didn't give themselves a chance. You know, for some people, they spent most of their lives pursuing things that were not healthy for them, pursuing lifestyles that brought them sickness and disease and pursuing lifestyles that landed them in jail. And so they get to a certain stage in life and they realize The ambition they had when they were young was not fulfilled, not because of lack of opportunity, but because they just don't have the drive that you have. And here you are teaching them something about drive and they are madder than a hatter. And they intend to keep you back. Be careful when you encounter those partners. Well, what do you do? Well, you have to figure out, is that something you're comfortable living with? Are they going to spike your coffee, spike your drink? (laughs) right? Or are they just going to work hard at tearing you down? Which is it going to be? Most, more likely than not, they work really hard at tearing you down because they know that they're in your inner sanctum and your inner circle. What they do is they strive to tear you down. So you got to be careful. So this is the season of change. This is fall and that change is coming faster than a NASA rocket. What you going to do? You got to line up and be ready for it. This is Harriet Kemmick. Join me again on Down to Earth with Harriet Kemmick.